All right, what is going on everyone and welcome back to another custom model showcase. And today we'll be looking at the narrow gauge engines. Starting off with Scarlow, he's one of the older models in my collection alongside Rusty and Duke. So after many years of play as a kid, he developed a lot of chip paint. You can see some essence of it that I apparently didn't paint over well enough. Or even the chassis wear. I did a poor job at painting painting over the chipped wood. So he basically required a full repaint and I did that with true red and true blue to go around and give him a nice fresh coat of red paint. I use antique gold for the dome name number and I still don't know what it is. I think it's a brass band that goes around the funnel. The Scarlow model itself was released sometime after 2003. However, because I don't remember the exact position of the number, after 2005, the number was lowered, so I don't know what era this would have come from, probably post-2005, but either way. I kept it mostly simple with them, with the detailing, so besides the buffer beams, the lining, and windows, cab, black running board. I used the Sharpie to blacken the magnets, which, yeah, that method is since been retired. And to go ahead and correct something I didn't really specify in previous showcases, besides using toothpicks to paint over the models, I actually use the same kind of wire that I've used for other models as handrails to paint some of the finer details, if it'll focus, yeah. So for example, Scarlowy's brass band, I used the, obviously the wire to get small enough and paint the name and even the lining. So yeah, I use wires for that detail. I guess that's all I got to say about Scarlowy. Next up, Reneus or Reneus or however the fandom wants to pronounce his name now. Right off the bat, it's obvious I have the post-2004 Reneus that had the white wheels, if the camera will focus at all this video. So that was one of the first processes, just going over painting the wheels black. And there wasn't much else to do. I, I painted the lining blue, painted the dome and the antique gold, brass band on the dome. And I used those same wire pieces to give them little handrails and pipe work along the top of the boiler and connecting the dome to the cab. Although strangely enough, you'll see it with a lot of the models, is I used yellow for the window frames instead of the gold. Something I'm considering updating in the future, but for now, I'm fine with it. Again, buffers. Black going around the running board. At one point, he did have a headlamp, but... It broke off. The steamroller himself, Sir Handel. Sir Handel was painted from the arguably best narrow gauge model to date, the 2008 Sir Handel. So, and unlike Reneus, who I for some reason kept in this weird pinkish livery, Sir Handel was painted in the same true red as Scarlowy. But I went kind of crazy with the details besides name, lining, some cab details. I actually did give him some painted handrails. I used some clay for steam pops. I, that's just what I'm going to call them. I have no idea what they actually are. I took a lot of wire pieces to give him handrails along the boiler and smoke box. He did have a lot of pipe work up here connecting his dome to the cab as well as whistle pieces, but, well, now there's just this one piece, so. One feature I really like is the little door here at the back of the cab. It does not open, sadly, but I think it looks cool. Again, the weirdly yellow window frames on the front and back. Yeah, it's kind of a mixed feeling. It, it's a great Sir Handel model. But I think it looks a lot better in red now, so it is what it is. Oh, 
Well, this is an interesting situation, Peter Sam. Now, this Peter Sam is technically meant to be Stuart. I wanted to own a Peter Sam that had the original funnel, and there was at one point to get an old style Sir Handle to go with this Peter Sam and make Falcon, but I only ever got this late 2002 Peter Sam, so I still went through, gave him, this is where I kind of did the combo of paint pens and black paint along the running board. I decided to keep it simple with the lining instead of going around the boiler, I just painted over the original red lining with black. And to keep mint soda or tradition, no buffers, just coupling on the buffer beam. Same yellow windows. The hole at the back of his cab, which... Don't really know why that's there. It just is. I guess the obvious thing is I intended to print out some decals of the nameplate Stuart. But I never got around to it. And I kind of like it how it is, so... So these are my only two Peter Sam models. I do not own one that's got the Geisel injector without quarry dust blue wheels. Yeah. So I actually ordered this Peter Sam off of eBay so he didn't actually come in the three pack that he was sold with. The Blue Mountain Quarry cars and Dynamite cargo car. And I'm fine with that. He was one of the ones with the least amount of work done. So just a simple buffer beam painted the top of the running board black. Oh, horrible buffer job back here. Holy good grief. And cab windows. So. I still think it's a nice model. Although I really do need to order another Peter Sam. Maybe one of these years. Alright, so this is a fun one. We got the 2001 Rusty. Again, besides Scarlow and Duke, he's one of the older ones in my collection. And he actually came in the Rusty with Construction Cars 3-pack that I actually own. However, this cement mixer, it's I had to order a new one off eBay because the original one just disappeared. Maybe one of these days will turn up and I'll have two. But yeah. The three packs still here all together, which is nice. This guy has a weird face. Rusty was the first custom narrow gauge engine I painted, and oh boy, <laughs> is the paint job dated. The buffer beams are brand new. I, I freshly painted those, so it looks nice, but oh boy. <laughs> oh, not the cleanest job. I could definitely, he needs a full repaint, so, I mean, but I won't keep him how he is. Uh, uh, yeah. <laughs> but I think it was just an early concept of, like, you know, how much I prefer the Railway series, considering I painted my rusty black, so. It, you can tell where I used a Sharpie for the cab interior, so. I mean, there's not a whole lot to say. I mean, it's literally a rusty. I painted black. I repainted his name, but I s somehow kept the five on both sides. So, yeah, there's rusty. I said Rusty was the fun one. Duncan definitely has the interesting story, as this is actually the third Duncan model I've owned, and it's currently the only one I have in Wooden Railway. My original Duncan was one of the 2009 ones, which, great model, I loved it. And then one day at Day of Thomas, I saw the old style Duncan in a DVD pack, and I couldn't pass up an opportunity. I thought, as cool as the learning curve Duncan looked, I loved the old style Duncan, so I got it, and I thought, why not paint it red, so I could have a red and yellow Duncan? Well, yep, both of them are gone. <laughs> I haven't seen those models in a long time, and I just recently purchased a new Duncan, and I, I'm, I'm sort of glad because 
while I vaguely remember that Duncan model, the paintwork on this one is easily a hundred times better. It's much crisper. So as you can tell with Scarlow and Sir Handel, the handwriting for the names, it's uneven. It's all over the place. Oh. These sides are slightly better, but Duncan on both sides is just oh, the name's nearly perfect. And that's the thing. There's certain things, obviously, I didn't have on the original that, or at least I think I didn't have on the original. I painted the cylinders, and given Douglas in real life has an open top running board, and you can actually see the st cylinders sticking up through the running board. I did that with Duncan. It kind of, I kind of hope it sells the effect with the red squares on top of the running board that his cylinders go all the way up. And Duncan is the only one that I've given the gold window frames to. As he is the latest custom I made, literally just earlier this week. Out of all these, Duncan's easily my favorite custom. Not really because he is the newest one, but... Yellow Duncan's nostalgic because of the TV series, but... I don't know, it's just something about the red paint which makes him stick out more. Same with Sir Handel. And kind of why I don't have a red Peter Sam because I intended to get one and just never did. Oh yeah, and going by what I was saying earlier about the name writing, just the difference. <laughs> the difference is incredible. But then again, I probably wasn't using wires for Rusty, so I, I, I love it. And we got Ivo Hugh, because Fearless Freddy doesn't exist. Obviously, it's the only Ivo Hugh model that's been in existence in 2002 one, so that means I do have the zoo cars that came with him. And obviously, as a kid, I wasn't really into, like, the gimmicky rolling stock, so this is really the only gimmicky stock rolling stock I got. Certain things like the construction cars... They, they get a pass because they're sort of realistic. Yeah, these are the only things that are kind of like out of... that look out of place in my very... small rolling stock collection. But this three-pack did inspire Thomas 1, Edward 2, Henry 3 to produce a really cool story involving Ivo Hugh and a baby hippo. That's definitely not a baby hippo compared to Ivo. <laughs> So up until literally last night before filming this, all I'd really done to Ivo Hugh was repaint his lining in the true blue, get him the buffer beam, and painted these sides of him black, painted the top of his coal bunkers, and one thing I like doing with some of the models is actually giving them the black on top of their water tanks. Another thing. Probably the better w window frame job, even though it is in yellow. Yeah, I think the back's kind of weird since the cab's, it's supposed to go down a little bit, so those tiny windows are a bit out of place. So, and literally like last night, I've used the only engine I've done this to. I went ahead and painted in side rods and the piston, I actually took some cardboard and duct tape and then cut it up to give him pistons. So, to kind of fill in this gap since I was getting tired of looking at just the plain black and I wasn't originally a big fan of the original detail that was there. Now I think it's kind of complete. I also gave him a bit of pipe work back here and underneath the cylinder. Yeah, I vote you. Oh yeah, he's another one of those characters the fandom has thankfully revitalized, so... You don't see him a whole lot, but... Eh, he's always a treat when he shows up. Uh, 
Duke is pretty simple. It's the 2009 model that I painted the top of his running board black, gave him windows, and the buffer beam with no buffers on the front and back, as well as a open door in the back of his cab so his crew, his fireman can actually access his tender. Um, water filler cap, and for some reason, when I, since this, I number the stuff was done when I was a kid. I painted a number eight on this tender. I don't know why in that color and on the far side of the tender. But I mean, it's, I mean, it's there. And it is out of the way, so I mean, it's noticeable, but also it's so small that in frame, you kind of have to point it out to notice it. So, yeah. That's Duke. Insert some random Shakespeare quote in Tardis Rescue's voice. We have Bertram. The 2002 and 2016 variants, which were his only ones. Again, he's pretty simple like Duke. Black running board, only on the this one. I didn't mess around with the original too much. Um... Windows, the bufferless buffer beam, the open door in the cab, another buffer beam, water filler cap. Same thing with Bertram, but since he's based on the tank engine version, this one. But did some black for the coal load, buffer beams with buffers. Took a paint pen and kind of fixed up the side here. That's mostly what I got to say about Bertram. However, I will make this one comment. It's just like... Why? I mean, I get the idea. If, like, you don't own this Bertram, then you could use this one as the tank engine or tender engine. But since the tank engine does exist, I, don't, I still don't get why they didn't just make the full cab like Dukes. I don't know. I got a few more models to look at. Next up we have the 2007 Mighty Mac. And all this was really done besides windows and for some reason numbers on the side. I repainted the buff- oh yeah and Mac had a bit of touch up on the freckles and eyebrows. When I repainted this buffer beam I went all the way around so it matched and man it sticks out amazing. And just all the way around, it looks great. Yep, and uh, that's Mighty Mac. Insert Victor. Um, he's got some buffers. Yeah. And we got Millie. This one is a mixed bag for me. Um... Part of me loves the model, part of me is, well, there's there's an elephant in the room for that. I went around and gave her the gold bits on top of her running board on the side of the wheels. Gave her some windows and the buffer beams. But for some reason I thought it'd be a good idea to use the wire and go around and paint the white lining that's on the front and back of her cab. And yeah, it didn't turn out the best. It doesn't really match. It doesn't match the lining on the side of her cab or even the color, even though the lining is meant to be like pretty white and it's sort of gray on the side of her here. I don't know. I, I, still, I still love the model. I think the lining is just... Yeah, it's, 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 an, odd, it's an oddball, so... For curiosity's sake, even though I consider Coldy narrow gauge, uh, that there's nothing different. I didn't paint anything on him or Catherine, so yeah. And that's it for the narrow gauge engines. Thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you on the next video. Peace out.